this idea is a really fun idea for any level from one to six. I've done it in grade four this year. I've done it in grade six last year. I learned that idea through a workshop I attended last year in New York uh, with a Google guru. And it's a whole lot of fun. It's basically, oops, sorry. It's basically art turned into math integration of both, which is kind of fun. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead with you and just do the steps. So if you want to go ahead with me, we'll just go into Google Slide, Google Sheet, sorry. Just open a brand new sheet and I'll take you through the steps and my presentation will guide you through it once you're on your own. So I'm just not sure how well it's going to work on the iPad. Where's the post? Where's the iPad? Yeah. So we'll start as soon as it's done working. We'll just uh, name it whatever pixel art. And you'll see different options of that. Are you a little bit familiar with Google Sheets? Yeah. Somewhat. Bit, yeah. You've opened it before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So right here under the FX function button here, um, it's called the awesome box. So you just want to click that so you can select the whole sheet. So that little corner piece here. And that will be the key place to go every time you want to change something. So once your sheet is all selected like this, you want to modify the size of your um, spaces of your, what do you call that? <laughs> you want to make it the pixel size, a little square. So still with your sheet selected, and if you've unselected it by mistake like this, you just click back on that awesome box here. Now go into format, go down to conditional formatting, and you should have a menu opening like this. If you see your range from A1 to Z1000, that's the size of your sheet. So you should have that range right now because your sheet is selected. <clears throat> so the first setting you want to change is cell is not empty. You click on that menu and you want text is exactly. And right under there you have value or formula. We'll start with number one. Just write one. And then we want to change the text color and we want to change the fill color as well. So just pick whatever color of the rainbow you want and pick the same for both. So once you've selected your text color and your background, your fill color, click done. You have your first color. So let's just set up three colors so that you have a good idea of how to do it. So add a new rule. And if I'm going too fast, please stop me. If I'm too slow, say something. Cell is not empty. You want to change it again to text is exactly. And put number two this time around. Change your text color to another color, and the fill as well. And <clears throat> And let's set up the third color. Text is exactly, this time will be three. You can set up as many colors as you want. I don't know that there is a limit to it. Now, how can you go back and change the grid or the boxes if you didn't do it right the first time? Um, what did you not? Well, I don't have 
I'm just thinking for a student that didn't doesn't have it look like that has it looking like the original spreadsheet. So if it if it looks like the wider yeah. Like so you this. can just go back and switch it and change. And the, and the switching of the spaces doesn't matter when you do it. Okay. If you do it first, then you're done. If you do it at the end, it's fine as well. And it really doesn't affect your formatting of your sheet. <clears throat> How do you make the boxes smaller, the cells smaller again? You're all selected, right? You clicked on that yeah. little box all and selected. then... And then the first row between A and B, you just scooch it down to make it smaller. So once your colors are set up, this is when the fun starts. And I'll show you how I've used it so far. So once your colors are set up like that, all you need to do is to click in one cell, put in number one, two, or three, whatever color you want to have first, and then move with your arrows, and the colors will appear. And you can start taking pictures like that. Did you say that again? What do you do so it keeps going? You just keep on clicking the numbers in the cells, and then move with your arrows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go up and down, sideways, it's fun. So, <laughs> as much as it is art, it also is very much a math activity. You can do patterning with this. You can do measurement with this. You can do parameter and area with this. Coordinates. And you can show uh, square root. Or a squared box to prove that four, to the four squared yeah. is whatever. Absolutely. Could Erase. those numbers have been letters? Pardon? Could those numbers have been letters? Absolutely. Yes. And you could Absolutely. Because um, you, code. yeah, because you, you decide what. Well, yeah, <coughs> like those sheets, those coloring sheets, like color by number, color by mm -hmm. letter. Like this is pretty much the same concept, except that it's a lot mm -hmm. more fun. Mm -hmm. um, so every student's name, if they did all the letters. Could be a different. Um, that would be cool. Could be a different. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be a fun way to do it. Yeah. If you know you have a large space that you want to fill in with a certain color, can you select a large space, hit a number, or do you have to go box by box that you know of? Just wondering if I was missing bigger. something. You can make your cells bigger. You can make your cells as big as you space. want them to. Or as little as you want them to, right? Yeah. It will just change, you know, the look of it. Yeah. Right? How small can you go? How small can you go? They're really small, actually. And then you could potentially even change the row size a little bit. Uh, not the rows, just the columns. Yeah, I've tried the rows; it doesn't work. Yeah. So I am trying to uh, color them. Right? Oh, absolutely. Like kids to on grid paper and oh yeah, it takes forever. Uh, yeah. Grid paper is is fun for some reasons, but or this is definitely the wow factor. So here are some of what my grade fours have done this year. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we started that. This is symmetry. You could do symmetry. Yeah. Color, yes. color choice contrast. If you're thinking art. Yeah. Did you think of the like, Can I think of this? <coughs> but if you're working with media, right? You can yeah. use it oh, yeah. for like a book cover. Yeah. Right? Or Definitely. Even movie posters. Now, is there somewhere, and maybe we'll get to this, is there somewhere where we could get directions on how to create something like that to get started? Yes. Uh, well, if you follow this procedure, like on, in my presentation, okay. you'll, you'll have step by step. Um, and then if you teach younger kids, you might want to set it up first and then send it through Google Classroom if you're using Classroom. Because in Google Classroom you can, uh, there's a function where it creates a new sheet for everybody. Yeah. Right, so, right? so that way 
You don't waste the time in having the kids format the page because that can be hectic if you have a hectic class or a big class. Um, so you could format it. You format it yourself and then you, um, you send it through Google uh, Classroom. That would be the easiest way. But it took me for my grade fours this year, it took us maybe half an hour to do to set up the page mm -hmm. and it was and the kids just finished it at home because they were like madame madame can we do it at home sure <laughs> yeah do you know the link to your lesson of the, your presentation again I didn't get it all the right. link yeah of course <clears throat> reduce it as well yeah you can delete rows mm -hmm. once you're all selected you can delete, delete rows yeah, and rows make it just make it that picture size mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but I would not print that I'm, yes. I'm not paperless yes at, by no yeah, means no, I, I do that. still use paper but, for but I try one, not to for that one that you're showing you know maybe like for well, and that's mm -hmm. why I'm using my Chromebook, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all you need is, is that mm -hmm. HDMI cord to, mm -hmm. uh, especially for things like that that we do on the Chromebooks, um, I try not to print it. Um, and then if the kids are using Google Classroom, then I will send send it to the Google Classroom folder, and then you have access to all of this, and, and the kids as well. But for a couple others. in the hall, you know. Well, that too, that. yeah, I know. I, I That's not my forte. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To show stuff like that, but so it's a yeah. So you've you've totally got the idea of what can be mm -hmm. can be done. Like if you look at this here, that tree is really cool. Oh, so I nice. would love to do like a parameter area activity with just this one. That would be really cool. I'm, and I'm seeing art with grade one and season. I, yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and all I said is that it's going to be Thanksgiving soon. Go ahead and create a scene that has some of those fall colors. And, you know, if you want to do a pumpkin or if you want to do a turkey or things like that. And then they just took that and ran with it. And if um, you're slightly challenged with your uh, imagination and if some kids are stuck starting. You can just do a Google search and pixel art, and you have about a million models that you can use. And of course, the Pikachu's of this world. <laughs> um, you, you can always give them guidelines, and you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that. But what I find that I like with having a model like that is that it teaches them to uh, how many colors per row and how to do those rounded edges because those are squares, right? So it, it teaches them how to, like especially here, like how to go down and make it look like it's a shape rather than just a, a square. So there's a ton of different things you can do. And um, you'll probably have comments about uh, Minecraft as well. Well, the, the teacher did stuff. similar, not digitally, but she did them on paper. They did it as an area perimeter activity with a group of threes. Yeah. Based on Minecraft. Yeah. They had to create a Minecraft character. Yeah, exactly. You might as well embrace it because most of our students are. Uh, crazy with that kind of stuff so but on screen can you do measurement because as you as you use a different device it, you know you can't do one centimeter um, 
That's my five minute call time. Away from it because it depends on what device they're using that would true. Right, so you can't um, um, actually use it as a measurement, right? Could you use almost like from a mapping perspective as a scale? Yes, so one scale. box is representing right. one centimeter. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to using the units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even digital storytelling, if you made one of these and then did a screen capture of that shot, you could import those pixel art pictures into Google Slides or whatever to do a digital storytelling where each page is a different story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Some great ideas. That's yes, we're looking for language arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. There's a ton of connections you can make with that. It's definitely a very versatile little tool. And I've even heard, um, what's her name, um, Heidi, she's one of our digital learning teachers here, Heidi Min, something, something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see her in my, in my head, but she was saying that um, she's used the conditional formatting as well with um, a digital mark book, so if you take oh, yeah. notes with your, if you do a, a um, uh, Google Form, you can set up your response oh. sheet. So you have your level ones, twos, threes, and fours, and they all have different colors. And so you can quickly see where you need to put your efforts. I have not done this yet, but I'm sure there is a YouTube video on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a Google innovator. Absolutely. So. Innovator is the top certification you can get. I'm working on my first one. <laughs> Any other questions? Perfect, thank you. It's fun. It is fun. <laughs> Hopefully you'll uh, you'll show that to your students and they'll be uh, as happy as mine were. <laughs> Try that tomorrow. Yeah, awesome. Fresh. And it's well, yeah, and it's something you definitely can use right away. <coughs> yeah. So that Format box, the magic box. Oh, awesome box, yeah, magic awesome box, box, call it whatever box. <laughs> I'm going to ask Heidi about how that works on a. Um, yeah. Yeah, on a attached to a Google form. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. is a certain extension or app that you have to add on. I'm trying to remember which one it is because I know I've added Don't it but haven't used or, it. Or There's a. Doctopus? Doctopus. Okay, so I was going to say I used a pender and I've used all the crap. Yeah, yeah Doctopus is one that you that you need to add on. It's oh, kind okay. of two different extensions, an extension with your Google Sheet that you kind of work together. Oh, okay. okay. That's cool. All right. There you go. And so once you're once you've set up a few rules here, and if you don't like what it is, you can always dump it. There's always that little garbage can, and. The kids that will tell you it's not working, <laughs> it's probably because they hadn't selected the whole page when they formatted. And you can change the colors after maybe? Yes. You oh, can yeah, you, you you click on it and then you have access to the same thing. Yeah. So the same image could be right. modified, modified. Yep. negative colors. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a fun workshop I attended in New York. Mm -hmm. I think she had even formatted her sheets to do a uh, race to a hundred. You know how we do that with, uh, yeah, so she had uh, a, a dice, a paradise um, on her screen and then two spaces where two kids can play together and they had to race to a hundred. which. Kind of cool. <laughs> Format that. It's a little bit more work, but anyway, start with that and um, just check out YouTube for more conditional formatting ideas. Yeah. Thank you, Thank yeah, you very much.